Oh, hey there, it's me again, Billy Watkins, with The Whole Package by Premier Packaging. I am uh, joined today uh, by Myra Vega. Uh, this is a mouthful. Uh, our Corporate Environmental Health and Safety Manager here Hello. at Premier. Welcome. Hello. Well, thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm okay. Good. We're, are we a little, we're, we're not nervous. We're going to we're breeze through this thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I would never be nervous. You haven't been thinking about this for days no, I, or anything. I just found out about it like five minutes ago. And yeah. you were kind enough to uh, sit down with us yep. uh, <laughs> here, here at our uh, Rancho Cucamonga facility. Right. So this is kind of your home base. That's correct. How long have you been with Premier? I've been with Premier about two, two years and okay. a couple months. Yeah. Uh, before you got here, uh, you know, where, what, what led you here? Where'd you come from? Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? That sort of thing. Well, I've been a California girl all my life. Yeah. So did, uh, you know, high school, college, I did all my OSHA training. I did all that here in Cali. But nobody ever takes it back to, um, cause I have here, you know, where did you go to school? Nobody ever starts with like, you know, I went to some elementary school. <laughs> What was the I name mean, of your elementary school? I mean, I went to El Cerrito Elementary. That's that sounds in, nice. That, well, it's not. It was oh. kind of in the in the bad part of Corona, but okay. but it was still a school. But so, it, it, it so steeled you for a successful future. Well, it definitely <laughs> made me a little tough around the edges. Yes. Uh, so you, you and you studied uh, uh, occupational health and industrial hygiene. Um, uh, you went to. Uh, uh, OSHA authorized uh, general industry trainer, OSHA training institute at the University of California, San Diego. Yes. Uh, a lot of stuff. I, I would have to imagine going to uh, college in uh, San Diego was pretty nice. Well, it was actually like all the OSHA certification. Training. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but... Um, How long does that take to do? It depends on what you're going for. So um, for me to become an authorized trainer, I mean, it's you're, you're looking at months. Yeah. Uh, years, depending on what certification. So uh, OSHA is, I mean, it's a it's a giant thing. That, and I assume those uh, the, the, the regulations change every so often. You have to kind of it's kind of a continual training thing, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, OSHA started back in the 70s. Uh, they have not changed a lot, although you would think that they have. But um, yes, you definitely have to stay on top of it because they're always adding additions and they like to borrow from different standards like you know, the NFPA, which is the fire department yeah. kind of, you know, so they borrow and they take and you guys all remember the pandemic. So they created some standards there. So. So, Myra, you worked for six years as a patient safety coordinator for the trauma unit at the University of California, Irvine Medical Center. That sounds pretty intense. Uh, what, what kind of stuff were you doing there? Well, um, yeah, I mean, intense is kind of an understatement. So I did everything. So trauma patient, I don't know if you know how that works, but you have your fire department, right? They call, uh, they let us know what's coming in. So it can be, for example, a vehicle accident or a gunshot wound. So my responsibility was to make sure that I page the appropriate team, for example, like the surgical team or an ortho team, um, blood or blood, have all that ready. Um, all kinds of things that involved the care of that patient had to be ready by the time they arrived. And sometimes we would get a call with an ETA about five, 10 minutes. Oh, wow. So um, everything, again, everybody was supposed to be in the room ready for that patient to care for them. So, so. you were, were you seeing uh, anything or were you kind of removed from that? Oh no, I, yeah. You, so sometimes I would have to run in there uh, with the blood b uh, bag in my hand oh. and have to take it. So you're, you're uh, no, nothing nothing really surprises you, I guess, no, at, the, at this no. point. You're, I mean, you're, when you're slipping in blood to try to help somebody's well, life, I mean... Man. Yeah. Uh, so what, what got you inter interested in the environmental health and safety field? Why do they call it environmental health and safety? I'm, uh, well, you know what? Because people forget that there is the component of environmental health and safety to this particular role. So uh, depending on what industry, for example, food industry sometimes calls it HSE. So it goes kind of in the order of your responsibilities because in the food industry, you're dealing more with, you know, consumer and the health mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So, and, and I've heard it even be called CHI. 
So, okay. so that's maybe safety or security, health, and, and then environment. It's a, it's a world of abbreviations. That's so. right. That's, that's how safety <laughs> and, you know, uh, OSHA works. It's all about abbreviations. So please uh, explain to us what this job entails here at Premier. Like day to day? Yeah. Well, that would be nice if I could tell you. The only thing I can guarantee is what's on my calendar. So if I have a meeting, I know for a fact I'm going to have that meeting. But everything else is just kind of, uh, we have to take it as it comes yep. and it's priority. Um, it can be, you know, for example, if we get an injury that gets reported or a near miss, that takes priority, right? We have to investigate it, figure out what the root cause is, and then find a solution. How many days since our last incident here in Rancho? Should I ask that? Is that no, you shouldn't. I shouldn't. Ask. No, sorry. no, it's like asking a woman's age. You just don't do <laughs> don't that. Don't do it. Shut up. <laughs> um, no, I think we're going close to about like forty-five days, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, pretty good. Right. Um, you're, you're you're trained in root cause analysis. Mm -hmm. I've done a little bit of that before, being on uh, bin box sites, uh, OSHA compliance, forklift sa safety. Um, so, you know, what was it that got you interested in this field? Well, I mean, most safety professionals, believe it or not, kind of get into this role by accident. And no pun intended, <laughs> no, right? No, no, no incidents, but accidents. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but working in the trauma center, I worked three 12 hour shifts. Mm. Um, so I had some extra days. And what I did on those extra days was work at another corrugated company. And I answered phones. And I started, you know, asking questions because working in a trauma center, I would see the aftermath of a work related right, injury, yeah. right? Um, so then I started seeing this machinery. So I got quite fascinated by that. Um, the general manager then saw that I was kind of interested and then started asking me questions. And before I knew it, um, he offered me that EHS quality coordinator position, no promises. I, um, you know, worked long hours. I did what I had to do and started learning as much as I could. And before I knew it, I was the EHS manager within a year at that facility and was the manager for about four years after. Um, and, and learned a lot industry specific uh, right. to corrugated, right? Right. Um, so, you know, explain to us what, what your job here entails. You, you do a lot of root cause analysis. Uh, OSHA compliance, forklift safety, all of that. What you know? What's what's that day to day look like? Well, um, you know, it it the day to day is is hard <clears throat> to tell because we don't know what's coming in, and it's kind of very similar. You know, now looking back at that trauma center, I didn't really realize it was setting me up for this position, yeah. um, which is quite fascinating if you think about it now. But um, so I don't know what what's always coming in, but what we're constantly doing is always trying to you know get input, engage the employees to find better ways and safer ways of doing things. So um, again. If it's an incident, we, we want to find the root cause. Uh, we want to find an appropriate corrective action, not just, you know, say, hey, if the employee wasn't paying attention, their fault, see you later, let's move on. So we really want to investigate things and, right. you know, and, and create a culture where, where employees are engaged. Uh, help me here. In terms of the investigation uh, part of it, what, what, how, do you, how do you set about that to start? Well, an investigation, you always want to have the employee part of it, right? right. So, so it's always um, the employee, myself, or EHS, um, the site leader. It could either be the manager. Usually, everybody wants to be involved. Right. So, um, we take a look at it, and then sometimes it's maintenance that has to come in. And hey, you know, does this make sense? Um, obviously, the frontline workers, the employees that are out there doing the job, we want to get their input to make sure again that we're finding the appropriate corrective action because it's easy to say, hey, you just slap this on it and move on, but we might be creating another hazard by really not investigating that. Right. So, you know, before you got here, you, uh, uh, there was the trauma center, you worked at a furniture company, um, uh, Circle K, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. food company, um, a, a lot of different industries, another corrugated uh, place. Now, what is the, um, you know, what's the common kind of thread in terms of, of the safety side of things with all of that? I guess the common thing is people, right? So yeah. behavior is always going to be um, that common thread that you're constantly trying to improve 
trying to find solutions for. But um, out of all those industries, it's still under OSHA regulations, it still falls under the general industry. So the easy part is that the regulations and the standards are the same. You just have to kind of um, know them in order to be able to apply them correctly. Hard, but, hard to apply them if you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, sometimes they, you know, eh and they think we uh, just do safety training, but, right. but food manufacturing, I would have to say, is the one that really stands out because you have the consumer safety as well as right. occupational safety. Not just so. the workers there, but right. And sometimes the stuff they you're don't, they, they don't match, right? right? So right. completely be, different. Yeah. yeah. Are you seeing recalls, right? There's yeah. a finger in the box of Cheerios. Um, <laughs> that's because, you know, uh, maybe we weren't allowed to have them have cut resistant gloves or something like that. But no, I mean, I've, I've seen E. coli. <laughs> I've never seen the finger <laughs> one. <laughs> I remember there was a rat tail and a pop tart once, but I'm not sure where that was or when. <laughs> Uh, a rat tail I, and a, that's like that never happened the urban what, legend what? never supposedly <laughs> I remember that back in the 80s but it could have been my mom just not wanting me to eat pop tarts so uh, when you came here a couple of years ago mm-hmm. how were we doing you know what was your first uh, impression of where we were at and how do you think we have, have uh, progressed bettered ourselves that you know well, I started off as a regional, right? Okay. So um, covered here, uh, Dallas, Oregon, and then um, Chicago as well. Okay. Um, but I think where we were, obviously, we were a bigger team. We had, you know, I think a total of seven, including myself, regional managers. Um, and now we're a team of two. A, a team but, of two. two uh, Amazing people. Two women. Yeah. Two women, yep. I love it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so you're, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll point that out. You are, uh, as, as uh, you know, the corporate head, you're doing all of our sites, right? Right. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mexico, Canada. I uh, uh, haven't touched Canada just oh, okay. yet, but right. um, Mexico, yes. So. How are, what's the, what's the difference in Mexico? Uh, in, que yo hablo español. Uh, un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> Was, so, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Oh, gracias. Um, <laughs> but yeah, do, did you have to, did you have any um, uh, knowledge? Because it's not that they don't have OSHA down there, obviously, but it's completely something different. No, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different world. Um, I haven't learned it 100%. So what we do is we go with a consultant um, for the Mexico sites because it is international, but uh, we are trying to standardize and be consistent with our training. So everything as far as training, uh, we get that translated um, and then communicate with them a little bit easier because you know I'm able to speak Spanish, but they're receiving the same weekly toolbox, the safety alerts, all that good stuff that we send out. So uh, premieres, uh, premieres all over the place. We're not just one location. We are, we are, uh, we're spread out. So how do you keep track of safety uh, all over the place? Well, I mean, I can do it without Michelle Kelly, our regional manager, um, and then just try to collaborate with the site leaders, um, the train the trainers, have a you know strategize what what we have to do. Um, and then a reminder, you know, because safety is one of our core values. It's, uh, it's right there. Um, so, oh, <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, sometimes we, we forget that, um, it is a core value, but, uh, everything else kind of, uh, pales in comparison, right? I mean, if you're not going, going home the way you came in then uh, yeah, something's wrong. So it is. Yeah, exactly. Do you, uh, uh, what's, what's your what's your thought process on training? How do you keep people engaged with it? Is that the hardest part? It is. So yeah. what do you, what, so, what kind of dog and pony show do you put on? To, well, it depends, right? Okay. It depends on the training. There's some that, that works okay virtually. Um, and there's some that you want to make sure that you're, you look, look at somebody, is this person getting it? Right. But, um, <laughs> we, we have uh, partnered with the learning and development team. Okay. So we're now creating a roadmap to kind of give some more options for that compliance training to keep you engaged. Like I could do it somewhat like the office. I don't know if you're a fan of the show, but (laughs) you know, I can, you know, just start a fire and see what people do. See what people do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do remember at one point, um, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I, uh, we had some safety training in Louisville 
uh, once, and I think I, I think I won on uh, one first place on one of the one of the uh, uh, groups of people that were doing it. But we all had to put out uh, put out a fire. With okay. A, with a with fire extinguisher. extinguisher or something like so that. Yeah. Do you remember? What the I really don't know is? what that. I think I just was screaming at the top of my lungs and shaking my. I don't, I don't know what I did, but I, I put it out fast. So. Okay. So maybe it was just. <laughs> Do you remember the first thing? Uh, do I remember what? The first thing you do with the fire extinguisher. Uh, you're going to use one. No. This was, and this has been 10 years, so I, I'm, I I'm really showing me. myself as an idiot for bringing this <laughs> up. <laughs> well, you just want to think of the word pass. So the first thing is you pull that pin. Okay. Right? There's a pin there. Yeah. And if you don't, then... Nothing's going to happen. Well, then think of the rest of the letters. You're an ass. <laughs> Can I say that? I think it's. I don't know. Are we you made me say it. Uh, why do they? And I take the safety. I take safety training for um, forklifts, right? Okay. And and I'm I'm fine now. It took me a while. I'm fine on a forklift, though they scare the hell out of me, right? Because they're okay. giant, you know, scary machines. But why why do they they always have to show the they always have to show uh, videos of somebody getting hurt on a forklift, I guess, because they've just got footage of them. But I mean, and that, that kind of jars you, right? You know, and then you pay attention. Well, I, I mean, um, I'm not sure which video we saw because <laughs> this, was a, we, this was an outside company. I think. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I think sometimes the reality yeah. is very important it because, is. Yeah. you know, it, it happens and people, I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of these um, employees that are doing donuts on YouTube and they yeah. film it and all this stuff. But um, the video portion is a requirement as part of the certification. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's more to capture your attention and and to honestly take it seriously. What is it about uh, pallet jacks that, that uh, inevitably, uh, 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 you know, like a 20 year old just wants to ride it like a skateboard <laughs> or a scooter? Why the hell do they do that? You know, you know what? I don't know. Just something but, about it. But there's always something about it. And usually it happens on second or third shift. Yeah, those are the best shifts to. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I like to come in kind of halfway through and surprise them every now and again. So, uh, you know, you started as regional. Now you're a corporate uh, working with uh, one other person. Let's give her a shout out. Oh, please. Uh, no, you. you no, do no, it. I'm going to do it. Okay. But I was planning on giving that shout out. Uh, because I know her well. Uh, uh, she was uh, she she interviewed me mm -hmm. when I started with the company. She was uh, her and Joe Cox okay. uh, were in the interview process. Well, I don't really remember much about it. It's a blur now, but yeah. So I've, I have fond, fond feelings and memories. Well, she told me you were going to be quite nice to me. So, <laughs> and that was she hasn't, right? Is I, it, I, well, not I'm a little yet. Rough I, right I, now, I, yeah, I? I haven't, I haven't felt that yet. Really? But no, I'm kidding. Okay. Right. But um, no. So I did mention that it's a team of two women, strong women, right? Yeah. Um, so Michelle Kelly has been with Premier over 20 years yeah. and i mean without her i don't think i would be able to do this i mean we constantly are encouraging each other and then she's able to be over there that time zone right. i'm here in this time zone so um i mean we work really well together michelle kelly um i worked out here i've talked about this before um my actually my first bin box project that was out in uh, riverside for about three months Michelle uh, set all of that up. Uh, she she uh, we had an apartment rented. Uh, she was like my mom. She she uh, <laughs> she whatever company it was. They she she had it fully furnished. You know they came in with pots and pans and and dishware and everything. She had cable and internet hooked up. And I assure you, all of this was budgeted at the you know at the time. <laughs> it was all part of the project. Uh, but she uh, she took great care in making sure that you know that everything was going to be uh, okay. <laughs> well, well, and I don't know if she'd appreciate you saying that she's like your mom, but but <laughs> <laughs> but in all fairness, but that's just the way she is. She really, really brings that human aspect to this role, and that's something you can teach anybody. No, so I think she's you know, yeah. Um, yeah, she definitely has it, and again, this is what the job entails um yeah we can talk about root cause analysis and this and that uh, but at the end of the day if you don't have that human factor that care um it's not going to be a good culture uh specifically for us at this plant at our other plants what what type 
types of, of issues do we face? Well, I mean, I think with having a team of two, um, having that presence that people are used to at, you know, especially in our manufacturing plants to have a regional there is missing. So ultimately it has affected our safety culture. Um, but we are working through that, trying to get safety committees, um, safety champions, you know, the site leaders know that we have to set the tone for the environment. Well, empowering so, the individual exactly. to be able to, to make it a safe work environment. Right. Um, and it's it's scary out there. Those are, those are big ass machines, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm sure that the, that it's kind of an endless, uh, like you say. I mean, you get a you come in every day, and it could be something different. Um, what what are some of the specific things we do on it on a daily basis to keep our employees safe? Well, um, I think well, for one, we say hello, right? People like to be treated like people. Um, we, you probably haven't seen it, but we do send out safety alerts, which could be either um, an injury, property damage, near miss, um, but that gets sent to all the site leaders to communicate that throughout the company. So we can be, you know, reactive in one location, but by communicating that, we can be proactive in other locations. Yeah. Everybody's so, got to know what's going on. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and on a weekly basis, every Friday, we send out a different topic um, for the site leaders to speak about on Monday, Tuesday of the following week. So we're constantly trying to uh, keep safety on everybody's mind, keep the employees engaged. And again, our compliance training, um, safety audits, our gap analysis. We have third party, um, you know, um, consultants that yeah. come, come on site, especially now because we are only a team of two. Those are the ones with the wacky forklift videos that yeah, yeah, scare the hell yeah. out of me. Yeah. yeah, well now I'm probably not going to be able to show that and, and now Sorry. I'm going to probably have to I've find I've ruined everything yeah. normally. So. So thank you for that. <laughs> My bad. Uh, what do you? What would you? What would you tell our employees? Um, you know about being safe. What's the? What's the most important part? I mean, I personally think um, you know I would tell them you know who do you work safely for and why. Uh, for example, you know some people um, you know it could be their their spouse, mm -hmm. their kids, their parent. Yep. Uh, for me, it's uh, my mom. I, you know, take care of my mom. So um, I would say don't put yourself at risk. Don't take shortcuts because these people that, that you're working for expect you to go home. And my job and our job as a company is to make sure we send you home the same way you came in. It's got to be uh, even harder in this uh, day and age because everyone, I mean, because you, and you have to be focused. You have to be there. You have to be present. Uh, when you're working out in a warehouse and that sort of thing and everybody's just our minds are everywhere right so right. it's it's we have to be even more vigilant i guess right um it's it's uh i'm, I'm sure there is a certain amount i mean if everything's going great awesome uh but you know it can all it can all turn on a dime right. uh, so it's a fairly stressful job i would think right no. Can be, I mean, can be. Yeah. But so, what do you do? What do you do to unwind? What do you do to de-stress? Well, I mean, I I think. <clears> um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, no. again, the trauma center, I guess, set me up. Um, I right. don't know if you'll notice, but I have some of these. these the are little aroma therapy. Yeah, little aroma stickers. What's and the scent? This is eucalyptus. Oh yeah. But yeah. Uh, definitely, I'm a massage girl. Any anything okay. meditation wise keep me aligned, keep me in the present. Um, I, I, I like that kind of stuff. But breathing exercises in your office sort of thing. Yeah. So if you see that door closed, sometimes it's not a meeting, it's breathing time. What, you're lucky enough to live in uh, wonderful Southern California. What do you like to do here? Um, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I don't do, I don't do much. Um, just enjoy the weather. It's just, good. Yeah. I mean, you, like, you like the pool, right? You like, like hanging out at the pool. I like the pool, even though I don't know how to swim. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> that doesn't seem safe. What? <laughs> you got well, get you see, some water wings. Well, I go I go in there with my dumbbells, so I do water roping. Okay. So I see in the shallow end. <laughs> All right, so I know I know that you have. There's got to be something de-stressing wise, other than uh, pool aerobics <laughs> that you do. Come on, let okay. me know what is it. Um, okay, so I do bartending. 
you know, that's more of a you're, you're like helping other people with their stress with well, right <laughs> and, and somehow i become a therapist when i'm when yeah. i'm bartending so yeah. um it's i guess uh it de-stress it for me and at the same time i'm helping people so i like that and and i Although I do have the the serve smart certification, which means I know how to serve appropriately, okay. so so I can still make sure people. Well, I guess that's a, like amount wise, or what are we saying, or just not over serve people. Not yeah. over serve. See, but it is a little bit different. I still get people home, maybe not the same way they they left right. because maybe a little a little more intoxicated, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely in a in a safe. And and so you do this on the weekends. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not every weekend because... But, you know. Yeah, because then the, when, when do I get to go to the pool? Right. You do it when you can. Uh, do you have a uh, do you have a favorite uh, cocktail you like to mix? Um, I mean, right now there's all these fancy drinks and, mm-hmm. and I find it funny because sometimes I'll do private events, right? And it's like the Moscow Mules on the, you know, on the um, menu and this and that. And now they add these... All these bitters the, and the, oh yeah, yeah egg the, whites, the, the egg te- whites. Yeah, yeah, the tequila We're all back sour. To prohibition yeah. drinks and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then at the end of the night, it's always like, "Can I just get clam soda and vodka?" So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, you know, you kind of go through that. But ah, it's the simple things in I'm, life. I'm a I'm a martini girl. So any martini. Oh uh, yeah. Them are good. Uh, oh dear. Yeah, dirty? Yeah, dirty. I was going to say, do you like it dirty or with a twist or? I mean, I think I like it extra dirty. Why not? As long as our warehouse. Why is not? And, and I should have known you were going to say that. <laughs> as long as uh, our housekeeping at our locations are good. Good. The dirty martinis I'm good with. Martini dirtier, the better. Um, blue cheese olives, regular olives. I go with regular. Okay, I'm not yeah. a blue, blue cheese. Blue cheese a lot. You know what? I mean, I don't mind them, but good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I uh, mean, it just gives it a different taste. It does. Yeah. All right, lovely bartender. It's a fun little fact about you. Right. I like it. And I actually have my socks. You have little olives on your socks. Like, <laughs> why not? Why when, not? Yeah. I, mm. I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> so you wore them. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I couldn't have enjoyed talking to you more, Myra. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Are you I glad? Are you? I mean, it, it's you, we did it. It's done. We did. Um, on to the next thing, right? Right. I mean, I guess uh, I, I just want people to know that safety is not always boring. Safety is not always boring, and it's people, extremely important. People think it's boring. Safety can be boring, but it's very important. <laughs> that's not. No, that's, that's, there's that's, a better. That's a no, bad that's bumper a, sticker, yeah, isn't that, it? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I would say, um, I don't know. Keep it safe and keep it sexy. Keep it safe and keep it sexy. <laughs> I, something. You do on the daily, <laughs> and I will try my best. Sort of keep it safe and keep it sexy. All right, Myra, I think that's it. I, I don't know why, so. where else can we go. I don't know other than the in and out. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It was great well, talking to you. Thank you. Give Michelle my best. I will. I, I You'll probably see her me. before. I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't ever see her. We and it's been a while since we've talked, so I'm. I'm, I'm a jerk. I need to give her a call. Well, say, hello, hello. I mean, you clear, clearly you're not calling your mom. <laughs> she's a uh, yeah. Well, she's a she's a figurative, okay, young mother. Then for I'll, me. I'll yeah. say hello. Say hello. Uh, thank you very much for talking with me today. Well, thank you for having me, Myra Vega. Everyone. On the whole package by Premier Packaging, I'm Billy Watkins. Your safe yet boring host. (laughs) Until next time, goodbye. Do you have comments, questions, or ideas about this topic? If so, we'd like to hear from you. Please visit primpack.com slash podcast to let us know what you think. Thanks. Thanks.